Broadcasting worldwide from the beautiful hill country in Texas, this is OneRadioNetwork.com. Eva Marsh is in Ontario, north of Buffalo, where hey, they just get so much snow up there. I mean, it just doesn't even matter, right? It's just... Good morning, Miss Marsh. Good morning, Patrick. How are you? Very well, thank you. Do you guys have a lot of snow? Actually not. Buffalo got it all. They got all the lake effect snow. Oh, so Buffalo, let's see, is south of the lake? South of the lake and uh, Uh, east of Lake Erie, so it really gets a swirl from the the big lakes. Lake Huron and Lake Erie kind of swoop down and dump it all on Buffalo. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> and, so, and so you all don't have that much. Uh, Not that much. And then the temperature went up over the weekend, and there's practically nothing left here. No kidding. Isn't that just, this weather's just really silly, isn't it, Eva Marsh? Yes, it is. I mean, you know, it's probably, yep. you think it's something we did, or I don't know. Well, there was a uh, an Ojibwe um, fortune teller, or, or an Ojibwe who prophesied uh, many years ago that uh, the earth would begin to protest mistreatment Uh, by human beings, mm -hmm. and it would occur in 20 generations, and somebody worked it out to be about the year 2000. Oh, really? Yes. What's what's Ojibwe? An Indian, American Indian? An Indian, Canadian. Well, we have Ojibwe in this area, Uh and uh, his name was Handsome Lake, or Lake Ontario, um, which is the Ojibwe, so... Are you interested in those kind of things, prophecy and all that stuff? Well, yes. Um, I find it interesting when elders in previous years have tried to warn us and we don't pay attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we humans, sometimes we just got hard heads, you know. Just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, my goodness, my dear, you were diagnosed with multiple sclerosis well, you've had it actually since you were eight years old? That was when the first symptoms appeared, yes. My goodness. And can we ask you, how, how old are you now? I was 70 on my last birthday. Good for you. You sound great. Yes, I did. Thank you. I feel great. You feel I mean, I can tell you, you got a lot of vibe. You got a lot of mojo, lady. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good for you. Yep, I keep plugging. You keep plugging away. Yep. So for six, what? 62, 62 years, years yes. you, you, you started to have multiple sclerosis symptoms. Yes. Huh. And what were those? Well, when I was a kid, the summer I was eight, and I remember this dramatically uh, because I loved to run a lot, mm-hmm. and I'd be running around and my right knee would buckle. Oh. And all the kids laughed at me and they said I was clumsy. Uh-huh. And I was very annoyed. Of course I wasn't clumsy. But the instant before my knee buckled, I could feel a little, it was like a little electric glitch on the inside of my knee. And then my knee would buckle. So I I knew I wasn't clumsy. I knew something was wrong. But um, the doctors could never find anything. And so they would just tell my parents that I had a, a creative imagination. Oh, really? Yes. Well, that was 60 years ago, too, I guess. Yes. You know what I'm saying. God love them. They probably just didn't even have any idea what was going on, did they? Well, uh, mind you, too, in those years, they weren't in a hurry to diagnose MS, and they really took as long a time as they could before they applied the label because they knew how devastating it was. I see. Eva Marsh is with us, evamarsh.net. She's written a book. A Black Patent Shoes Dancing with MS. I think they're in their fifth printing now, are you? Yes. Oh, my goodness. So yes. people around the world have been finding this book somehow. It's Living Proof of Self-Healing and Recovery. So we're going to have fun talking with Eva this morning, get this whole story. Patrick at OneRadioNetwork.com is our email address. Patrick at OneRadioNetwork.com, 888 663 25 November, just for reference here. So... 
So then what happens? So they start taking you to the doctor, and the doctor said, oh, nothing much going on. wrong. Then what happened from there? Well, then there were more symptoms. Another symptom I had was that my right arm would go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And and my mother would say, well, just shake it or pinch it. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But it would be numb for weeks. And... um, and again, she'd be annoyed with me, and she'd just say, well, go outside and play. Never mind. It'll be fine. It'll, It'll be, be fine. fine. That's what moms say, right? That's what moms say. And then another symptom I had was like like little electrical shocks in my scalp and then down my back. And and again, like I knew I wasn't making any of this stuff up, but sure. all the adults were saying, you know, I, I was trying to get out of doing my chores or <laughs> didn't want to do my homework or didn't want to make my bed or whatever. Right. But I knew something was wrong. I knew I wasn't making yeah. it up. You just know when you feel those things, right? Yes. And then I found out quite young that adults don't listen to kids anyway, so. You think? Well... That was my experience. <laughs> was, I know. It happens to a lot of it. Some yes. of the adults who get it, though, they do, which is great, you know? Yes. So that went on for how long? This uh... Well, through even in my teen years, when I was 16, I lost the sight in both eyes. And uh, the family doctor told my mother that it was because I did too much reading. Oh, you're kidding. No. But now, looking back now, I know that the um, specialist in internal medicine who who checked me out, he knew. But as I said before, in, in those days, nobody was in a hurry to, to apply the label MS. Plus, as far as net- retrobulbar neuritis or problems with eyesight go, in 50% of cases, there are no further symptoms. So why attach a label when you really don't know if anything more is going to happen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We we don't have that same caring. Um, we're, we seem to be in a hurry now to apply the label as fast as possible. Um, anyway, that's yeah. so, my observation. Yeah, yeah. So you're quite knowledgeable and, and have uh, degrees in physics and electrical engineering. Isn't it interesting that you experience some kind of electrical kind of a thing. Well, you ever uh, made that, that was, connection? Yes, that well that was why I chose physics because I wanted to try and understand the disease process and the healing process right from the quantum level up, like right from the tiniest level of energy wow. Wow. through to through the big picture, the macroscopic picture. So, yeah. And then electrical engineering, that's all about communication. So then we now have a, we apply that to medical research. So in bioengineering, what we're looking at is the signal processing in the body. Mm-hmm. So that's what this whole MS thing is about, is communication with the nerves and things like that. How can there you explain many, it to us simply? How can you explain yeah, many it to ways, us simply? Many ways to look at it and many ways to describe it. And I think I chose physics because um, physics wants to simplify things. So mm-hmm. out of the whole chaos of all the information available and all the theories that are thrown around, um, what I look for is the simplest approach, the simplest solution. And can you explain to us and talk to us like we're a golden retriever? And so we can so we can understand what MS is. Um, okay, um, MS. Uh, there's some viral activity in the nervous system which destroys parts, chunks, or whole parts of the covering of the nerve, which is called myelin, which mm-hmm. is like insulation. Mm-hmm. And that insulation is to preserve the integrity of the nerve impulse and to protect it from crosstalk from other nerves that are operating at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay? That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So it's like like your coaxial cable. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So, and if the covering of your coax cable is damaged, then you're going to have interference to your signal. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay, well, the same in the nervous system. When the myelin covering is damaged, then there's interference with the signals that we're trying to send in our body. Yes. And 
then that causes the symptoms that we become aware of. So there's kind of crosstalk where um, your arm or your leg or your eyes or something, the the nerve impulses get messed up. Yep. They get just cattywampus, so to speak. That's, that's a very scientific way. That's to a medical it, yes. term, cattywampus. I learned that's that. Right. Ma- I, I like that. At the Mayo Clinic, I learned that. Okay, <laughs> okay sixteen minutes after the hour, we're going to continue and uh, dig into this nice lady in Ontario, all about her healing from this um, thing they call MS. Previously with Dania Vitalis, ladies, testosterone, estrogen, and pine pollen. People often think of testosterone as something that's specifically for men, but it's important to remember that men and women use testosterone in their metabolism, and men and women use estrogens in their metabolism. You can think of testosterone and the other androgens as being really critical to that sense of willpower and that sense of motivation and drive that we all have, that goal-orientedness that we all have. And you can think of those substances as helping our body to stay anabolic or regenerative. Uh, so both men and women require testosterone in their metabolism so they can continue to regenerate their body and so that they have that sense of well-being and happiness that only comes when we have sufficient levels of testosterone in our bodies. Okay, ladies, there you go. Regardless of how many times you've been around the sun, maybe something worth exploring for your hormones. Exclusively from Sir Thrival, Daniel Vitalis, any of these Sir Thrival links, click and order one radio network.com and put yourself a sticky note on your forehead now i wouldn't do that it'd look funny if you go out tonight today shopping for thanksgiving maybe just put on your computer that there's a 10 percent deal on all sir thrival products use promo code one radio through this weekend so pine pollen elk velvet shaga rishi the dual extraction the yummy colostrum shazandra the organic key mm, what else is here well you might have some other things Elk Velvet Antler, boys, don't forget, and girls. Great products, wonderful products from some of our faves. And One Radio is the promo code through this weekend for 10% off with Daniel Vitalis' Sir Thrival through our website, oneradionetwork.com. Transforming your body to the shape and size you desire and feeling good at the same time just got a whole lot easier. The new frontier of human nutrition will be to focus upon the effects foods and herbs have upon the epigenetic portion of our DNA. Epigenetics teaches us that cells can be signaled to perform in a much younger manner. These signals can come from biochemicals in food or from frequencies generated from thoughts and feelings from yourself or others. One World Way uses high-quality milk derived from Amish pastured cows. It is processed to protect the proteins from damage and deliver the optimal epigenetic signals to all the cells of your body. My name is Daniel. I'm 34 years old. When I started using One World Way, I weighed 228 pounds. Now, after two and a half months, I weigh 182 pounds. This is my ideal weight. I've noticed an increase in stamina, rate of recovery from workout, and an increase in my potency. You can order One World Way here at OneRadioNetwork.com. That's OneRadioNetwork.com. You can, and they're shipping the 21 grams of protein new formulation, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. You can order today, but you, if you wait till Friday, hint, this is a hint, uh, you, you can get 15% off Santa 15 at checkout. Cyber Weekend. Oh, this is Cyber Weekend. Oh, well, listen, I, I'm not going to even go out if it's Cyber Weekend. I mean, there's, you know... Too much traffic. Cyber ooh, Cyber Weekend at uh, Synergistic Nutrition through OneRadioNetwork.com. Just click an order. Put Santa 15. Santa 15. 15% off of everything that Stephen uh, Hewer offers through OneRadioNetwork.com this weekend. Previously, Dr. Gerald Pollack surprised us with this interesting fact about the benefits of the Relax Far Infrared Saunas. Can I say something about Far Infrared? Yeah, I just yeah. talked about it. So infrared, so as I said, infrared uh, energy is what builds this fourth phase of water. And, and the idea of a sauna, what happens is if you subject yourself to infrared, the infrared is absorbed by your body, absorbed by your cells, and it converts ordinary water to fourth phase water and then you feel better because all of your cells are actually working better not only your brain cells making you feel happy calm whatever but your muscles and you get rid of your muscle aches and what have you so this wonderful feeling that 
emerges after you've been in the sauna is actually a physical effect of building fourth phase water. We've demonstrated that experimentally. That's and fascinating. Maybe we're actually making the water in my cells when I do the sa- infrared sauna into fourth phase. Exactly. Well, that's cool. I'm pretty sure that that's the case. <laughs> Always something new. Isn't that great? Click and order the Relax Far Infrared Sauna and finance it through PayPal with no interest. Right here, oneradionetwork.com. Nothing is more expensive than bad information. Know the source. OneRadioNetwork.com to Patrick now 888-663-6386 or email patrick at one radio network.com a lot of interesting things on eva marsh's uh, website eva marsh.net all about her book black pat and shoes dancing with ms and she began feeling uh, about eight years old she's got books dvds she speaks she coaches people she does workshops she's uh, 70 times around the sun and she's healthy lady, and she lives up in Canada, and she figured this out, and uh, seems that after she started with the MS early on, these symptoms that nobody really believed her, um, she then began studying the electrical, engin- electrical engineering and physics to try to figure out what was going on. So, so do you think that even March, after all these years, that if you had to put like if you're on a game show and you had to put the initial cause of this, um, would you say it was some issue with your immune system early on that your body wasn't able to deal with a viral or bacterial that kind of uh, alienated these myelin sheaths? Um, Actually, over the years, I've now been reading research and history for 47 years. Wow. Um, I have found repeated... Uh, references to uh, the red measles virus, a genetic mutation of the red measles virus. Really? And it's uh, exactly analogous to uh, chickenpox and shingles. And um, I found this in in a book about childhood diseases by a researcher named Millar, M-I-L-L-A-R. So if anybody else wants to look that up, they can. Um, A Hmm. very interesting book about all the childhood diseases. And as I said, in particular, I was paying attention to um, measles and MS. Um, Also, the very first medical journal that was published in the brand new United States in the 1770s, the lead article was warning doctors to beware after measles epidemics that people might begin to uh, exhibit symptoms from months to years later of what they called diffuse disseminated sclerosis, which is an earlier term for MS. Hmm. So, um, (laughs) I, you know, found that very interesting. Um, I've, I've gone way back in history because I'm curious about how we have, how our thinking about this has evolved and whether we're still stuck in medieval times or whether we're actually in the 21st century century like we think we are. No. We've, so, had, we've had people over the years that had suggested to us that these things like measles and mumps are actually a, a good thing for the kids to get because they're a, a detoxification process, you know. But well, maybe, I, that's not, maybe that's <laughs> not true, you know. Patrick, I'm not going to get into that discussion. Yeah. They're a fact of life that we have to deal with one way or another. Right. Right. And, of course, in, in my childhood, there was no such thing as a measles vaccination. Yeah. Um, and so, like, it just happened. We had uh, a whole bunch of kids out of school with measles at the same time, and we thought we were having a holiday, you know. Um, but I had measles about the early part of June, mm-hmm. the year I was eight, and by the end of the summer, that was when I was stumbling and my right knee was mm-hmm. collapsing. Mm-hmm. So it could so, have been um, the way just your 
genetic makeup too, the way you, you dealt, your body dealt with that virus that you, you know, contracted too. Well, no, tell you me. know, I, I, I don't want to complicate the conversation. Um, I think it's too easy to complicate, again, I'm repeating myself, to complicate conversations about MS. Um, Fair enough. Because okay, th- th- there's like no way, think- looking back, there's no way you would actually know the exact cause, would you? No, I was just looking back after all these years and right, right. trying to put things See together. See if you have some kind no. of connection there. So, so, um, hmm. so then what happened then? He went then to you then. So um, this then got, got progressively worse, and then you, you went blind. Uh, no, actually, no, I didn't. Oh, actually, you didn't? I finished, I finished school. Uh-huh. Uh, but then you, you, you lost your eyesight, though. I lost my eyesight, but I regained it. Okay. And uh, went back to school and finished high school, and then, like a lot of us did in the fifties and sixties, I got married. Yeah. And uh, and I had uh, oh shoot, I've got somebody who's out here. <laughs> Somebody's knocking on with, your door. Excuse me. That's all right. No, no, stop. You can go. Well, you want to go take care stop. of that for a minute, uh, I Eva? Have you want to go take care of that for a minute? Because I can. I, I just did. I just yelled out the window. <laughs> okay. Okay, I heard that. You're gonna, okay. You're, you're... Well, a couple of trees fell down, and I've got a guy out here with a chainsaw. I see. And I do not want to disrupt this. Well, if you need to just go out and talk to him for a moment, I can just uh, dance here for a minute. I know. I'm just. I just stopped him now. So. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Okay. I want to get to what happened. Yeah. So I got married yeah. and uh, had two beautiful little babies. Oh. And I was working in the pharmacology research lab at the veterinary college here in Guelph, Ontario. Mm-hmm. And I woke up one day to go to work, and I was immobile from the neck down. Wow. And so uh, hmm. now finally, when people could see the symptoms that I had been complaining about for years... Uh, they, they diagnosed MS, and they told me, number one, I wouldn't recover, and number two, um, I should get my affairs in order because I didn't have long. And I thought that was silly. And how old and was you at that time? I, I was 22. My goodness. Okay. They say, you just get your affairs, you're out of here. That's right. <laughs> well, I thought, for heaven's sakes, Come like on. they hadn't been right for the previous 14 years. <laughs> why would they be right me, Why yeah. are they right now? So yeah. anyway... Um, now, by this time, I had realized that I could move, start to move my left side. My mm-hmm. right side was paralyzed, but my left side was mostly a problem of um, having no feeling and, and no um, position sense, like mm-hmm. not knowing where my body was. Yeah. So anyway, I went home, and so there were my two little girls that were one and two, and they were quite happy to have mom home from work. So we crawled around on the floor, and we had lots of naps, and we sang songs, and we played games, and we had lots of naps, and I started to recover. And the more I recovered, the more I could do, and within three months, I was fully recovered, and I was ready to go back to work. So, Doing anything other special with diet or anything else? Just resting? Just resting and moving and ignoring it. Yeah. Hmm. Just, you know, singing and, you know, people talk now about the healing sound. Sure. Well, old MacDonald had a farm. <laughs> Sung again and again is very healing. It works pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that was your spiritual exercise, right? That's right. That was my spiritual exercise. And, and then just the love of my children. Yeah, yeah. You know, just being, uh, playing with them and... Uh, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Having a good time. So anyway, I went back to work, and as I said, I was working at the veterinary college, and I had access to a full medical library, so instead of playing bridge at lunchtime, I decided I'd better go to the library and see what I could find. And I very soon found, now they had told me that myelin doesn't heal, mm-hmm. all right? Mm-hmm. Well, the very first, one of the very first papers I found was all about remyelination. Hmm. In an adult cat. Now, because I was at the veterinary college and had veterinary researchers to talk, you know, speak with, yeah. and they told me that there was no difference between adult cats and human beings, that we are all called large mammals. 
and that whatever happened, whatever these, this research project showed about adult cat nervous system was equally applicable to the human being. Hmm. Well, and I knew I had just done it. Obviously, I had been immobile in March of 1967, and I was back to work in June of 1967. So hmm. I knew something had happened. That's amazing. Healing of some kind. Sure. So anyway, this is a paper by Mary Bartlett Bungie. She's formerly head of research at the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis and uh, did this exceptional paper as her Ph.D. thesis. And um, what's wonderful about it is because, like, at 22, here I was, this airhead who didn't know very much, (laughs) and here's this wonderful paper with all of these electron microscope slides, okay, Mm -hmm. full color, and Mary Bungie's got little arrows pointing to various features, so, you, you know, you'd have to be a nitwit if you missed it because an arrow would point to a feature and it would say, here is broken down myelin, here is myelin healing or repairing, and here is myelin further advanced in the healing process. And then Bungie also, so on one level she's doing electron microscope slides of spinal cord segments, okay? Mm -hmm. And at the other, on the other level... She is observing the condition of the cats that are not being sacrificed to make slides, okay? Mm -hmm. And what she observes is that the animals, the other experimental animals, begin to improve when remyelination begins and that these animals have returned to normal by the time most axons, okay, so most nerve cells, are at least partly remyelinated. So you start to recover pretty quickly once the myelination starts, remyelination starts. Yes, yes. Which is what you experienced. Yes, but you see, most humans believe that they can't recover. Yeah, because you're told that, right? We're told that again and again. We're bombarded with that message. So if we believe it and we make no effort then the myelin has no direction about how it should be healing. Yeah, well said. Okay? Yeah. And it's just like playing an instrument. You, you, you have to practice. You have to school your nervous system. You have to tell it mm-hmm. how you want it to ch- make changes and reconnect in order for you to play that instrument. Good for you. Okay, the body's the very same. If we want to walk again and recover, we have to give a, give the body directions in healing, and that is simply to want to do it. Wow, that's very powerful. Well, you know, we have all of these books nowadays about the power of the mind and body, yeah. and, you know, nobody seems to know what to do with this information. You just got to do it, like you're saying, you right? Just you have to do it. You and do and then it. there's another book, a researcher named uh, Bruce Lipton. Who's, sure, who's we know done Bruce. Yeah. Wonderful work on the power of our belief. Yes. And his book shows, proves the power of our belief system to make changes in us physically. Yes. Epigenetics, huh? Epigenetics. So it does, you know, we, we keep giving things new names. Right. But this it's all is, the same thing, right? It's all the same thing. <laughs> it's all the same thing. Yes. Well, another researcher, Candace Pert, who wrote a book called Molecules of Emotion, and then she's got a CD set, too, about um, the body as the subconscious mind. Oh, boy, I like that. So it's our programmed beliefs that also help to determine the health and wellness of the body. Yeah. You know, so there was my mother from the time I was a kid telling me again and again, run outside and play and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Which okay. was actually a, a good thing, right? It was the best thing that she could have said. Yes. That anybody could have said. Because I, my whole subconscious was programmed to ignore the symptoms and get moving. Get moving. 
God love yeah. you. What's what's the name? Uh, Molecules of emotion. What's that uh, her name again? Because that sounds like somebody we should talk to. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Candace Pert died last oh, year. Okay, well, we had just talked to her in our dreams, and so okay. well, but we talked to her in our dreams, but her website is still there. Okay, molecules and, of emotion. And her her book is still available, and I also think um, on Amazon you can get her CD set about the body as the subconscious mind. And her last name again, dear? Is, is? Pert, P-E-R-T. Hmm, Pert. First name? Candace. Candace. Oh, excellent. And in her work, she was the one who discovered peptides. Peptides, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Very interesting. 24 minutes before... 10 o'clock, you're a fascinating woman. I really appreciate having you on the show. Uh, Thank your you. website is evamarsh.net, evamarsh.net. So, um, so let's see. So, so then after, so have you spent your, so after that, then, then you, did you heal, Eva, when, when you went back? And I mean, or, or did you deal with, have you dealt with this for a long time? Did it, symptoms come back at all? Oh, yes. Oh, they did. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I've had different combinations of symptoms. I've had more problems with my sight. I've had, uh, oh, more problems with uh, my right arm in particular. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm right-handed, so, of course, I have to keep using it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then, that well, that's sort of what my whole book is about, the mm. whole story of all of these funny symptoms. And then and then this wonderful research that I find, and and. That nobody, I don't know if any nobody else reads research or what. Probably not. No. It's all there. I like that's where I found it. So, so to this day, do you still kind of dance with this a little bit, or not? Uh, I haven't had any symptoms actually now since 1991. I'll be darned! My goodness. And that was the third time that I was immobile from the neck down, but it was the fastest recovery of all. Because by 1991, I'd been through it so many times that I knew exactly what worked and just got going. And uh, oh, it's amazing. I was very quickly back on my feet. So. so, so in '91, you actually went totally immobile again, and you had enough experience. What did you do? Well, the main thing the. the the visualization is very, very powerful yes, yes. for engaging the healing process. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, a lot of meditation to stay calm and, yeah. and allow the body to do the healing. Uh -huh. And then repeated attempts to, uh, with, along with visualization, to start moving. And um, and I did. You did. Like it, did, did. Eva, do you think the body... Have you been able to determine with the body, um, let's see, how can I phrase this question, likes healing better in a neutral, meditative, just pure, clear state, or with the addition of a visualization? Have you any idea? Well, I think visualization is a meditative state. Uh-huh, yes. Okay. Because when I, when I visualize, I visualize the physical things that I have enjoyed doing. So, for example, I would visualize going out to the pasture, getting my horse, uh -huh. brushing him down, putting the halter, you know, putting the, the uh, bridle on. And I used to, when I was a kid, I used to ride bareback all the time. So then, then you incorporate the feeling yes. of riding a horse, the smell of the horse. Um, the feel of the sunshine. Mm -hmm. um, that's all very, very powerful instructions for the body. I want this again. I want this again. Fix things because I want to do this again. Yeah. So it's almost as you're acting as if in your mind's eye, in your, in your creative imagination, that you already are healed. Yes. Because then that then the body knows where I'm going. Yeah, the body I knows want. where you're going. And I think it's been my experience, and people have told me that I trust, and it's been my experience, that what you said about the feeling is intricately important. Just Not just the visualization, but the feeling is what gives it the power, in my opinion. Well, and we're going back now to Candace Pert and her book about molecules of emotion. Uh -huh. And according to Pert and um, 
Bruce Lipton touches on this too. It's our emotional response to go, what's going on around us that determines how healthy we're going to be. Our emotional response. Let's see. Okay. To what's going on around us. So it's people think, oh, the environment. Well, that's not air and water. It's like where we are, where we live, where we're working, who's in our family, are we happy? Mm-hmm. What's our emotional response? Like, what was my emotional response to this gentleman starting up the chainsaw out here outside of my window? Right. I was not happy about that. I know. I could hear. So, anyway, it's, things are quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> you did good. <laughs> So the emotional response then would also, if you look at it on the negative way, would be some people have a very strong emotional response to, I don't know, pick one, Fukushima, chemtrails, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that that is not healthy. That's right. Uh, the body, The body can only function in two ways, and it can't do the two at the same time. The one way we're all too familiar with, and that is when we're annoyed or angry or upset or or scared, Mm -hmm. depressed, whatever, Mm -hmm. the body cannot heal in that state. It can't heal. And that includes even speaking words. Yes. That are the the sort of fight or flight words, the defense words. Yes. Okay, we cannot heal in that state. The other state is a state of wellness and healing and being content with life and happy. And in that state, the body flourishes. So it would be the difference between saying a program thing of, I have a dysfunctional thyroid or my thyroid is getting better every day. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think you're right. Yes. Cause, and, and we... It's easy to jump into that thing and say, well, I have this, I have that. We hear it all the time, Patrick. Yeah. What, what I have done all the way through is I've always thought of myself always being in the healing process. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good job. Guys, Sharon just sent this. This is an, uh, from Amazon. This looks very quite interesting. Candice Pert, your body... Is your subconscious mind? Wow. Yes. Yep. Hmm. So you got an audio CD, audio audio book download. Boy, that sounds interesting. So she argues that we've created this body, I guess, from what are all of our beliefs and what we think we are and all everything. Is that what she's saying? I I well, we we definitely we affect our body by we what we're it. thinking. Yeah, we affect our yeah. body. Yeah. Well, just as, you know, as my mother programmed me all those many years to not pay attention to the symptoms, to just run outside and play, and I would be fine. Yeah. And so that was all programmed into my subconscious. Yes. Yeah. And when I realized it, I just continued doing it. Mm-hmm. My mom, who, uh, God love her, raised seven kids, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever known her to be sick. She wasn't mm-hmm. sick until she really got very, very uh, up there, you know, 80 or so. And she smoked, and so she had uh, some lung stuff. But mm-hmm. she used to tell us, she said, um, um, I don't have time to get sick. <laughs> I've got too much to do. Too much to do, <laughs> Well, yes. you can imagine with seven kids, right? And, and yes. you know, back those days, they did, you know, she did everything she uh Iron the, iron the clothes every day. We went to Catholic schools and we wore blue pants and white shirts and we got a clean one every day. Mm-hmm. Washed and ironed it. Can you imagine yep. that with kids? And uh, cooking and cleaning and, uh, and um, she said, I just don't have time to get sick. And she didn't get sick. No, and well, you know, my mother said exactly the same thing. <laughs> it's correct. It's like, and, okay. And mom. she was never sick. I don't even remember my mother ever having a cold. Really? And she said the same thing. She said the same thing. She didn't have time to get sick. So. <laughs> well, you had, so you got, you came into a good family there, to, so you prepare you for this, right? Uh, yes, I was. I was very well prepared. And then uh, you mentioned being raised Catholic. I was pretty well raised by the nuns, you know. Which, oh, you were? Uh, from, yeah. from grade 1 right through to grade 12. Oh, God. And, um, and I know that they contributed 
greatly to my approach to gathering information. They were always stressing the importance of getting information in context. Really? Yes. Hmm. That we had to not just know a fact, we had to know the history of that fact. Good for you. We had to understand how that fact came to be regarded and believed. Okay, and that just didn't apply to religion and catechism. That you know, so which is why in my researching the history of MS and damage in the nervous system, I've gone back a couple of hundred years and um, found out some interesting stuff. Um, well, let's talk about that. Can we take a little break? Yes, and then we can. you want to take a few emails too? Yeah, I would love to. Okay. Now I'm not near my computer. No, no, I'm going to do. I'll read them for you. Okay, thank you. We're good. Okay, we have about 15 minutes. Isn't the lady's great, isn't she? 14 before the hour. Are you a moo cow or not? Daniel Vitalis, the colostrum we offer is from moo cows. Why is it good for people? There's a sort of wonder of nature in that there's this relationship between cows and people where cow's colostrum is actually extremely bioactive in human beings. We've known that for 8,000 years. And there are over 4,000 medical studies confirming that when human beings consume cow colostrum, this, a similar thing happens in their body, starts to format their immune system. It seems to be due to substances that are found in colostrum like, that are called immune factors, and also this really amazing substance called transfer factor, which somehow transfers the immunity over from the cow to human beings. The important thing to remember is that we're living in an era where there's more people alive today with dysfunctional immune systems than ever before. And colostrum gives us the ability to actually restructure, rebuild, and reformat our immune systems so we can really thrive in our modern world today. Thriving, yes, indeed. We like that. The colostrum is now in the one and two kilo bags as well, or you can get capsules or a smaller size. Just click an order right on the front page. And it's your Thrival link on OneRadioNetwork.com. I answered an email of a nice couple who were talking, give me, asking my opinion on some autistic things, and I'm not a doctor, so I don't do medical advice, but I talked to a lot of people, and I was recommending that they try the colostrum and, and the sulfur that we offer. She had uh, asked if she thought people had told her that the sulfur would actually... Um, um, increase candida in the body, and I, I emailed back and said, "My, I, once again, I don't give medical advice and stuff, and I can't tell you what to take for your kid, but um, I would think it's just the opposite. Everything we've been told, I mean, it delivers oxygen to the body and to the cells, this organic sulfur, and candida and fungus and this kind of stuff, they don't like oxygen. So I told her I think it would be just the opposite. I sent her the link to that uh, interview we did with the uh, uh, the, the real cute girl that they just did uh, sulfur and uh, uh, royal jelly and her autistic symptoms went away. Now, I'm not saying that sulfur is a cure for autism or, <laughs> or royal jelly, but this is what happened with this lady. We talked to the, the, the mother and the daughter on this interview, and it's quite fascinating. You can just Google autism in our um, search engine on one radio network and hear the interview. She didn't make this stuff up. So there's something going on with the sulfur. There's definitely uh, the idea that we are sulfur deficient because of the uh, chemical fertilizers began in the 50 and what it does to the sulfur um, whole system. We know that sulfur and the whole glutathione thing is is so everywhere. I mean, how many people talk about it? Dr. Rohn, Dr. N- all these people talk about it and uh, how important it is. So that's why I, I guess people just feel better taking the sulfur and I email after email after email do we get every day I just love this sulfur we just love this sulfur and people try it and they like it let's see I had one here's one um I'm having similar experiences to other people very vivid dreams I can remember I don't need as much sleep seems like I'm getting deeper sleep this is from Amy and this oh this is the lady on the um on the on the um what um the autism. Here's one from Cheryl. I've been on your sulfur for three days now. I feel tremendous energy, so much so that I'm going to lower my armor thyroid dose tomorrow and see how I feel. I'm remembering my dreams too, which is wonderful. Interested in the idea that sulfur could maybe be affecting my thyroid. Found this article. Um, so, I mean, 
we don't get into all that deep stuff and recommend you get off your drugs and anything like that. That's all stuff for between you and your healthcare practitioner. That's way above my pay grade. But, uh, you know, you can try stuff and see what it works and talk and work with your people. It might help you to be able to get off of different things. I can't say that for sure. We don't make those kind of claims around here. We just uh, give you information, give you our experiences, and uh, uh, let you make the decision. We're going to order up again so for this afternoon, probably around noon our time. If you'd like to get in on a, a two-pound order, $79, you can do that. $79 and uh, ninety four fifty if you're in Canada, $99 around the world. Also, if you'd like multiple pounds, four pounds or more, we can give you a 10% discount. Tell me how many pounds you want, where you live. I can quote your price, and then we can work it out. And uh, pony up. Take a lot more during the holidays when you can eat more burger doodles. We are listener-supported. One radio network. Talk to Patrick now. 888-663-6386. Or email patrick at oneradionetwork.com. Well, you never know. You might go over to Grandma's house, and she'll have... Uh, Something strange to eat, and certainly, it's my opinion, it's best to be grateful for the food and eat it. Tell her how great it is, even though your little mind says, oh, no, I shouldn't have that. Just eat it. It's better. I think. Just eat it. Eight minutes before the hour, but that's just me. Let's see. I know you, we were just, you were just about to talk about something. I interrupted you. Can you refresh? Well, we were talking about the body has only two ways to function, yes, and, and yeah. it can only function one way at a time. And we actually have a choice. We don't have to stay in the scared, depressed, um, fearful mode. We can move into the healing mode. And for me, the easiest way was always by singing and um, uh-huh. watching uh, comical movies. Mm-hmm. Just get back in that in that space. Get back in that space, and then the body knows exactly what it's supposed to do. The body wants to heal. Yes. And if we if we can keep ourselves in healing mode, the body can just take off and heal us. Well, you know, Eva, what you're saying, you know, it's so simple, and I and I agree with you. People over the centuries and the and the eons of the, God love them, you know, they they've. They have complicated this more than I think it needs to. Um, we are soul, right? We are spiritual beings. Huh? We, we are. We yes. are. And wherever we put our attention is where we are. That's right. Yes. <laughs> I, I want to bring up, as, when we're on this topic, yeah. I'd like to bring up MRIs and how it contributes to misunderstanding MS. Um, hmm. After, in, in, ni- in the 90s, so after I'd had my last, serious episode, um, some colleagues and, and I were trying to get funding to do a research project on recovery, and the uh, the guy who was holding the money bag said, well, you don't even have MS, and I said, would an MRI prove it to your satisfaction? Mm-hmm. Okay, so a couple of days later, I had my MRI. It's been interpreted to mean that I require 24-hour care because there are so many spots, they can't even count them, and there are spots in area of my brain that are supposed to be interpreted, well, that have been interpreted to mean that I can't process any information. So, Patrick, I don't know I'm speaking to you. I don't know what that I was yelling out the window at the guy with the chainsaw. Um, you know, I don't know what the weather is like out there. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. So... Um, anyway, um, I, I and I've talked to physicists here at the local university about the application of MRI to the human body, and um, they they say that doctors do everything they want anyway, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah, so. yeah. Here's an email for you. Greg says, I've heard that Lyme as well as chlamydia pneumonia as a target possibly of the viral source for MS what is your opinion of this? Okay, my just my overall statement is that there are many, many, many ways in which neurological symptoms develop, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. And it just depends who you happen to consult, how they choose to interpret the symptoms, and whether they put the label MS on it or whether they put some other label on it. Uh-huh. Okay? Yeah. 
Uh, we can even have um, neurological symptoms if we have teeth that need to be looked after. I'm saying if we have what? Teeth, or if our dental yes. problem. Oh, yes. Okay, dental We're problems huge, can cause right. neurological symptoms. It's huge, yeah. Okay, and uh, so there are many, many ways in which neurological symptoms can occur, and currently, Patrick, current modern drugs, many of them have neurological side effects. Certainly, certainly. And, and the number one bad guy is cholesterol drugs. And yeah, I encourage anyone who's taking cholesterol drugs to really read carefully about the side effects. Good for you. Have they you, are not rare. They are merely rarely reported. Rarely reported. Good for you. Eva Marsh, have you over the years um, come up with anything from the supplemental nutritional or dietary form that you feel helps to heal on the, on the physiological level? The, the myelin sheets. You mean besides chocolate? Besides chocolate. Yeah. Oh, no. We, we're, <laughs> chocolate's number one. I mean, come on. Okay. Chocolate's number one. Um, well, you know, I'm a farm kid. I've lived yeah, on a farm right. most of my life, and it's been meat, vegetables, fruit, uh, whole wheat bread, mm -hmm. uh, lots of milk. I grew up on a dairy farm, so yeah. I grew up with lots of unpasteurized milk. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. Which in Canada is no longer legal. <laughs> I know. Well, it's tough down here. You got to know somebody. Oh. Um, the, well, I, I'm just glad that I was I was raised at the time I was, and that I had the influence that I did. Yes, ma'am. And my mother said, "Run outside and play, and you'll be fine." Now, here's an email from a doctor, William Thornton, who's listening. Would you like? Would you please ask Miss March her opinion of? Terry Walls, Dr. Terry Walls' MS program, which she says it uh, put her MS in remission. Okay. Um, there are many of us who go into or who have a successful remission, and however we choose to interpret it is up to us. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I, it, all that matters is that we recover. Oh, it does. There's a many ways up the mountain. Yes, and over the years, actually, fifty percent of people only have one serious episode. Hmm. So, but if we believe that we're going to go downhill, we will. We will. But if at some point we we grab onto something and we say, "Oh my gosh, you know, I can recover," then we do. <laughs> Paul from the UK writes in in London, who's listening. Wants to know how you healed your myelin sheaths. Well, I'm having similar issues. I think, to Paul, just listen to this entire show. This has been what it's about, right? Or go to my website. Go to your website. The, our podcast will be available in a couple of hours. You can hear the whole show. Obviously, you must have just tuned in. But, Including um, me screaming at the guy with yeah, the Yeah, yeah and that, that helps. That helps. <laughs> that helps. I am human, Patrick. Uh, I have. <laughs> that's all right. I, warts and all. Yeah. Um, before we go, we have Dr. Gary Gordon on the line. We're going to talk more about healing. He's an interesting man. Um, how do you think, or do you think that any kind of exposure to different electromagnetic things, uh, cell phone towers, computers, these kind of things affect or affect people, you or the myelin sheaths in the nervous system? I don't think I, I don't think it affects specifically the myelin sheath. I think it affects the entire body. Mm -hmm. And I think that from what I have read, um, books written by electrical engineers and uh, the the um, lectures that I to which I have gone, mm -hmm. um, it's the 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 sort of the low endless. Um, frequencies that are more more damaging than intermittent higher frequencies. Mm -hmm. Can you feel them? Like when I mean, you get exposed, Wi Fi and things. Do you feel it? Uh, no, I don't. You don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't. But I, I live right here in the middle of nowhere, out in the country, <laughs> and <laughs> and not much around me beside guys with chainsaws who are going to cut up these trees that fell down. Yeah. So tell folks, before we go and take, go to our next guest, about your website, evamarsh.net, and what they'll find there, and how you, you do consultations. If, 
anybody can email me, and if they want to chat some more, we can set up a Skype. Um, if they're close enough to me physically, they can come and visit me here in in, in beautiful Cope Town, which is in the big city of Hamilton. Mm-hmm. And your email? My email is eva at evamarsh.net, and Marsh is M-A-R-S-H. H-C. Eva at Eva Marsh dot net. Dot net, dot yes. net. Well, you're a delightful lady, and maybe you have another 70 revolutions around the sun if you'd like to do that. that will only be 140, and, I, <laughs> you know, I mean, what the heck. Well, thank you, Patrick, and keep doing what you're doing because it's really essential that uh, we, sh- we hear more and more voices about every possible aspect of health and wellness. Well, it's our pleasure. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you very ha- much. Happy holidays.